I'd like to take you back to 2011, where in my hometown of Athens, Greece, like many of you today, I was uh, an IB diploma program student. It was my first year. I was an extremely motivated uh, student, someone that uh, was studying really hard, and I had every intention of going to the best university and actually to progress. Um, I'd finished my first year. I'd done excellent predicted grades. I was quite lucky at the time to go into the best space in order to be able to apply for universities. And I want to go to study in the United Kingdom. So my first choice was Cambridge University. So I had to apply early in October of that year. Very motivated, I had done excellent applications as I thought. And then after I finished my applications, a couple of weeks later, I started getting one rejection after the other. And it was really confusing to me at the time because up and until this time, I thought I had done actually everything right. My university counselors, my teachers had given me full confidence that, you know, based on everything I had prepared and done, that I would be in the right path for success. But every university that had applied almost rejected me. And then in a sudden twist of events, the only university that seriously considered me was Cambridge. And they invited me for an interview a couple of months later. I joined the interviews. I thought I did a great job at the time. I was really excited. I came back to Athens for a Christmas break. And then during that time, I received an email from the college that they rejected me. And then I get a fall into this state of confusion and stress, not really knowing what I've done wrong, whether it was up to me to determine why this had happened. And I was really, really disappointed. And then two weeks later, out of the blue, I receive an email from the same college that actually rejected me, that they made me an offer, something that up until this day, I am yet to understand and yet to comprehend. The offer was really high, so I had to study like crazy in order to be able to meet it. And I still remember during the announcement of the results in July of that year, that all of our students in the school was, were gathered in the same room and our teachers sit us down and actually tell us how badly we all did. I'll never forget that story because it was quite shocking to hear uh, all of our students, our teachers telling us that this was the worst year ever for the IB diploma program in our school and that most of us had failed. And in that strange concept, context, I remember opening the uh, letter uh, with my results and realizing that I had just barely scraped my admission into Cambridge by barely in every single subject as if some deity outside of fully of my control had actually decided that I should go to that university. Then I spent three fantastic years studying uh, Cambridge, met some amazing people, learned a lot. And then as many of you might face at some point in your life, I had to decide what I'll do after my third year. Should I go continue my studies? Should I go uh, work? Should I take a gap year? And since at that time, I was not really clear what I wanted to do with my life, I decided to continue studying. And the options that I always had in my mind was, of course, to continue studying in the UK or to go in the United States. And then two very seemingly small changes in my daily routine, a conversation with a friend and a conversation with a teacher actually ended up changing that whole trajectory. So one of my close friends who was also studying with me, he approaches me one day in quite a normal conversation. He said, you should apply to a university in Stockholm. It's fantastic. I laughed him off. I didn't think he was actually being serious. It was not something that I'd ever considered. So I completely ignored it. And then two weeks later, I go to meet my economics teacher for supervision. She was correcting my essay. And then out of the blue, I never really expected her to actually ask me that question. She says, do you want, what are you applying? Where are you applying for universities? You should apply to, to Sweden. That was really unexpected for me. I was like, where is this coming from? And then I found out that she's actually from Sweden and that she wanted to encourage as many students to apply to Swedish universities. And out of these two seemingly extremely small things that happened in that period of, of my life ended up changing my whole trajectory. And in something that I had never planned for or expected ended me moving to Stockholm, which has changed my life to this day. So I shared these original personal stories with you at the start, just to sort of highlight what I've learned over those five years, especially during my B, but also going through all of my studies, I had always thought that I had everything under control. It was this illusion that I presented that 
if I do everything as per the plan, as per the everything I had in my mind, that I would actually succeed and nothing would get into my path. This illusion that everything was under my control. But what I learned from all of these stories is that most of the things that we do and most of the decisions that we take, a lot of the variables are completely outside of our control. Up and until this day, I still can understand whether it was an administrative error, whether a teacher that woke up uh, at Cambridge University that day and decided to change their opinion and make me an offer. It was though completely outside of my control. But instead of me being disappointed about it and feeling sort of powerless, you know, being able to handle things, I actually embraced it. And I understood that this is a core part of what it means to be human. And what I changed from that time onwards is I changed completely my mindset towards life. I embraced this uncertainty and the fact that in most of the times I won't be able to have control over most of the things around me. But most importantly, I changed my mindset to be much, much more positive and forward looking. And throughout that time where I changed it, I got many, many opportunities that allowed me to shape who I am today. And I do want to share one of these opportunities that arose because the story of that organization not only has shaped me, but I think also resembles how seemingly small changes, both that have happened in my life, can actually happen in an organization's life as well. So when I was in Stockholm, I got introduced to this fantastic organization called 180 Degrees Consulting. And today, 180 Degrees Consulting is the world's largest university-based consultancy. Um, with over 175 university branches across the world. But that was not always the case. And actually the story of 180 can highlight how one small change can actually make a very, very big impact in the long term. So I'd like to take you back now to 2007, quite some time back in Sydney, Australia. So a place far, far away. And at that time, three university students that like many of you are extremely motivated, they were very keen to make a difference in their local community. Uh, they wanted to start something in order to learn, in order to get skills that will then make them employable, and then of course have fun at the same time. So what they thought when they were uh, starting is to donate with their minds. It's a very simple idea where they realized that their core skill, their core uh, strength is their own mind, and that is how they could make an impact in that world. And that's how they started with an organization called 180 Degrees Consulting. And the impact that they made at the start was at a very local level, local charities and NGOs in Sydney, Australia, with a bunch of university students from the University of Sydney. And actually for several years, the organization did remain really, really small. They completely changed the trajectory of the organization. And that change was a Mexican university student who decided to do an exchange semester at the University of Sydney. So in 2011, that Mexican student found out about the organization, joined, participated, invested his time, and fell so much in love with what the organization did that when he came back to his own university in Mexico City, decided to start the first chapter outside of Australia. And that seemingly very little change, one student making the decision to study abroad, actually created all the ripples that this day have brought the organization to over 175 chapters in over 40 countries. And always reflecting on this story, it has really inspired me to see how something that could have never been predicted uh, can actually make such a massive difference in an organization. I'm sure when the founders uh, of 180 were sitting in their uh, in their lecture halls or in a room discussing how to expand the organization they would never have predicted that this would have been the way that it grew to the point that it is today so these stories that i shared with you today what i want you to take out of it is not a feeling of despair a feeling of desperation that you know nothing is outside of our control and because we cannot control anything we should let life be as it is that is not my intention. My intention is for you to embrace the beauty that is uncertainty and the beauty that is life in that we can't control everything around us 
But most importantly, I want you to focus on your own mindset and on your attitude towards life. The way that I've approached over the last couple of years and the way that I've focused in developing myself is always on having a very clear positive mindset, but most importantly, always looking towards the future. And what I've learned during this time is that if you continuously think in a positive way, but most importantly, leave the past aside and all the random decisions and everything that might have happened uh, beside you and you look into the future, you'll be extremely surprised by the plethora of opportunities that will arise in front of you that you never have expected, but the plethora of people that you might end up meeting that you never thought uh, was possible. And finally, by the plethora of learnings where if you were to reflect when you were a young person, you never thought you would get. Thank you for your time.